Tag TV and Tag Radio. Technology now has a voice of innovation and information. Get it on www.tagtvonline.com. Joel, thank you for joining me on Tech Talk today. Glad to be here, Tino. Uh, you and I have had a couple chances to talk, and uh, we were excited this month that we're going to focus on uh, Make It Venture Capital Month. So a lot of our listeners are young companies and uh, companies that are at various stages in their development, but certainly there's opportunities for investment. And we're glad that a company out of Charlotte has actually done some investing in in uh, Georgia and, and specifically in Atlanta. Uh, I think a good way to start would be for you to tell me uh, something about Frontier Capital, uh, what you focus on, and uh, I know you have more of a what I'll call laser focus than in some uh, some venture firms, and then why that particular focus. Okay, that'd be great. Well, uh, you know, Frontier has been focused on providing growth equity to successful business service companies in the southeast since we were founded in, in 1999, Tino. Um, our companies that we're looking to invest in are very focused um, because of that business services uh, industry focus. They've also typically bootstrapped their way to about 5 to $30 million in revenue, and they're growing and they're profitable, but they're at a point in their growth where they could expand more quickly and strategically if they had some capital and some support from a partner like Frontier. Uh, and the reason we focus on that is, you know, we think there's a good risk-reward profile in that, in that segment of the market, Tino. We also think that the southeast market uh, really matches up well with that strategy. The southeast has become really a services-oriented economy, and uh, we find a lot of opportunities to invest in those types of companies here. And, you know, that focus is often overlooked by other people, the early-stage venture investors really like to uh, invest in high tech um, and really, you know, disruptive technologies. Right. And the buyout funds like to be, you know, a little bit later stage. And right. so we find that by focusing on the middle, um, we can pick off a lot of opportunities to invest in great companies that just haven't attracted the interest that they deserve because they're services oriented. So many of the companies that you invest in may, this may be their first uh, outside investment then. They're, they're typically not your... Uh, model where it's early, very early stage, they get some funding, and then they come back for you for another round? Yeah, we typically say we don't do alphabet soup. You know, we're okay. not looking for a B or a C round. Um, most of the companies we invest in have either uh, raised a little bit of capital or really bootstrapped their way up to that point, Tino. And it's a, it's a good point that you bring up that, that is different about our strategy because we are typically um, the first institutional investor um, in those companies. Uh, we've looked at the uh, tag finished a state of the industry report uh, and presented that at our summit um, in February. And uh, one of the uh, outcomes of that was to talk about the venture uh, climate here in Georgia. Uh, and uh, we saw, you know, a, a pretty healthy mix of uh, investments in uh, Georgia companies from Georgia venture firms, and then investments in Georgia companies from outside. And I know you have a, a lot of uh, interest in, uh, in in Atlanta. I'm sure our listeners would be interested to see, you know, what's the magic about this area? How does it rank amongst other places that you look at in terms of, uh, you know, climate and uh, just the potential for to find companies here? And uh, maybe you could even talk a little bit about some of the companies you are invested in. Sure. Well, we, we are very focused on the southeast, um, in terms of our investment profile, and Atlanta is at the top of our list. Um, we think it's a great place to invest, and we've currently got four portfolio companies in Atlanta that we've invested in. Um, and the reasons why we, we think Atlanta is a great market is that, you know, it has a good combination of elements needed to, to spawn and, and support high-growth companies. You know, if you think about what's going on, there's a combination of good companies – with good ideas, but also they have the talented executives and management teams that can actually take those ideas and those companies and take them to the next level. Um, so that's one, one thing that we really like about Atlanta. Um, the other is that, you know, if you think about the southeast as an emerging part of the United States economy, uh, it is a very large and growing region, and Atlanta has really cemented itself as the economic hub of the southeast 
and and for that reason alone is, is very important to the region. Um, and with that, you know, we see that there's a great system of advisors, um, partners. I mentioned management teams, right? Um, but also groups like TAG, where you can bring people together and provide that support and ecosystem that really helps uh, uh, you know emerging companies grow and, and sustain themselves with, you know, either the relationships or the knowledge that they need to be successful. Um, and, you know, despite all that, I, I don't think that, uh, that we see a lot of local private equity funds in, in Atlanta, Tino, which right. you know, probably sounds similar to your, your experience. And so we find it to be an underserved market in some respects from the, the local and regional investors. So it's uh it's a, it's a little bit of a hidden market then. Uh, people here there may not be enough investment dollars uh, in the state, uh, uh, at least focused on this area, but then, uh, you know, a company like yours can come in and uh, and be selective, but there are opportunities here, it sounds like. There are certainly opportunities in, in Atlanta. We have uh, current investments in a, uh, you know, part of your question was, was types of companies. Yeah. We have current investments in a company called Anodyne Health, which is a uh, revenue cycle management company for physician practices. They do, you know, basically outsource physician billing and, and, and business intelligence software um, for that uh, billing process. Um, we have an investment in a, uh, a niche call center in Atlanta, Ryla Teleservices. Uh, we have um, an investment in a, in a company by the name of Quick Parts, which helps uh, – prototypers and uh, product developers uh, secure early parts to manufacture um, their their products. Um, and so we've got a nice mix of what we'd call uh, traditional to tech-enabled service companies in Atlanta that, uh, that we've invested in. And we've had several companies in Atlanta that we've already uh, exited and done really well with. So we just, we just view it as, a, uh, as an anchor market for Frontier Capital. That's great, and I think we, when we spoke before, you talked about this range from call centers to software as a service, and call that your your sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, well. We appreciate your you being in the area. I think uh, switching gears a little bit is, um, you know, you talk about your your play in this area that it's, uh, you know, a profitable company perhaps, and and why with a prop profitable company. Um, and a successful company want to raise capital? Well, we find that there's kind of two reasons that typically drive that decision, Tino. Uh, the first one is, you know, those companies are growing and they're successful, um, but, uh, you know, entrepreneurs are definitely always thinking about bigger and better. And sometimes those companies could grow even even more quickly if they had additional capital. And so the capital may be, one of the, the hurdles that they're facing in terms of, of growing as fast as they'd like to. Um, so that's one reason is just, you know, having the capital to increase sales and marketing, um, to make an acquisition, or maybe even provide some liquidity um, to, to the early investors or founders. And I think the other key reason that people tend to, uh, to look to raise capital is they're really looking for a partner, um, someone that understands their business, that can bring resources and, and experience and knowledge to the table to help them grow more effectively and efficiently. And we find that, you know, ideally a company is looking for both a partner and capital, but a lot of times it's one or the other that triggers the thought in an entrepreneur's mind that, uh, that they'd like to raise capital. So um, as you're looking to uh, select a company, what are the top things, what are the most important things you look for in that selection? Yeah, we, we try and keep it pretty simple. Uh, we would like to, to really know that we're investing in uh, good businesses, companies that are successful today and good at what they're, what they're doing and with happy customers. So, so I'd say that's the, the first screen. Is this a good business that's successful today? Um, then, you know, we want to know, are they providing value to their customers? If, if they're not providing value to their customers, they probably don't have great margins and, and aren't very profitable. So that's that's usually the second screen we look for. And then the third one um, we typically look at early on is, you know, are these entrepreneurs and managers people that we'd want to work with? Um, you know, we all have uh, a lot of opportunities to, to work with different people in our careers, and it's, it's certainly more fun if you can find folks that you, 
that you enjoy and respect that you can partner up with and uh, really create a win-win scenario. And how do you, like in an area, I know you're out of Charlotte, and I know you are a frequent visitor to the area, which we appreciate. Um, how, how do you go about identifying, finding companies uh, uh, to uh, actually begin to do your research and study on and develop that relationship? Yep. Well, we, we tend to uh, try and be actively involved in the community. So coming to events like the things that TAG sponsors, um, meeting with uh, other investors and advisors and attorneys in, in town, we find that by digging around and talking to people, not about who's raising capital, capital but about who is doing something interesting and exciting. And those companies tend to bubble to the top. And, and once we figure out who they are, um, we try and go and meet with them proactively um, versus waiting around for them to, uh, to decide that they want to raise capital um, so that we can see if, if we can be of help, if, uh, if they have any interest in raising capital, and, and you know, if we can be part of that uh, support system for those companies in Atlanta. Uh, my final question just relates, and I think a lot of our listeners may have an inkling as to how this all works, but uh, but how does your firm make your money? Sure. Uh, it's a, kind of an interesting question. Um, we, uh, we're we actually a lot like the entrepreneurs themselves that we're investing in here at, uh, at Frontier. Um, we, get, uh, we get a management fee uh, for managing capital for our investors, that helps us, you know, buy business cards and, and uh, pay our rent and, and keep the lights on. But really, at the end of the day, just like our entrepreneurs that we, we partner with, um, we're focused on building a portfolio that has substantial value. And as our companies succeed and uh, ultimately are sold or our portions of those companies are sold to other investors, um, we realize a portion of the investment profits. So just like an entrepreneur who is sacrificing today to, you know, build a company worth, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 million dollars several years from now, um, we're really in that same boat. And, and that really drives a lot of our activities and our philosophies around, you know, how do we partner with great entrepreneurs to create value? And in the end, um, we're all rewarded. Exactly. Uh how uh, would it, if a company uh, again is listening in on the, on the radio program, and uh, what would be the best way to, if they feel like they're a company that matches uh, the profile that you're looking for, um, what's the best way to make a connection? I would say for a company to just call us. Okay. We are we are very open to uh, to talking to people. Um, we can usually determine uh, pretty quickly together um, if there's an opportunity to continue a discussion. So I would say to, to pick up the phone and, uh, and give us a call, and uh, we'd be more than happy to talk to, uh, to anybody who, who thought there might be a fit. That's great. Well, our listeners have been uh, hearing from Joe Lennock, who's with Frontier Capital, and uh, this is part of our Venture Capital Month. Next week we'll be talking to John Hunts of our Capita. And, uh, Joe, thank you for talking to me on uh, Tech Talk. I really appreciate the opportunity, Tino.